Scott, have you fooled around at all with electricity? Um, yeah, at home. And what do you do? I go to electric trainer, little motors and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So you know about conductors and non-conductors? Yeah. Well, I have a simple testing setup here. Just check you out. See, if you put those two things together, current from a battery back here runs through and lights the light bulb. Yeah. So I'm going to give you some everyday materials and see if you can identify whether they're conductors or non-conductors. First, an easy one, copper wire. Oh, uh, it's a conductor. Okay, check it out. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Now, how about the red stuff around the outside? No, because it's an ins insulator. All right, so touch that. No, no light. No. Okay. How about a uh, plastic spoon? Um, I don't think so. No. No. An aluminum rod? Yep, probably. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then um, a glass rod? No, I don't think so. Because you know glass is used as an insulator, right? Yeah. How no, about a fork? Work. Metal fork? Yeah, I think it'll work. Okay. Yep. So far, all of the things that were conductors were what? You know metal. What? Yeah, we're all metal, and the uh, non-conductors were non-metal. So what do you suspect about a pencil? No, it's wood, wood, so I don't think okay. so. No, it didn't work. No. Now turn the pencil over, though. See what I did? I sort of cut it in half so that we could get at the lead. Okay. And I'll put one end down here like that, and you touch the other along on the lead now. Yeah, just kind Not of very dim. Bright, though, yeah, right? just now dim. Now touch it about down here. It's brighter. Yeah. yeah. It also makes a difference how hard you push. No, try it. Just touch it very lightly, and then push harder. See how it oh, gets yeah. brighter? Depends on what kind of a contact you make. Yeah. In other words, there's a whole group of materials that uh, do not conduct electricity when there's a lot of it in between, yeah. but there's less and less and less, then it becomes a better and better conductor, and they're called resistors. Have you heard of resistors? Well, I've heard my mom and dad talk about it, but that's about it. I wonder if they were talking about electrical resistors or political resistors. I don't know. Anyway, they were talking about pe people who resist something are called resistors, and this, of course, resists the flow of current. So yeah. that's why it's called a resistor, too. Okay, how about this one? You even know what it is? It looks like some kind of heater or something yes, like that. Yes, you, you screw this into a special sort of socket, turn on the current, and this gets hot and gives off heat. So what do you suspect it will be, a conductor or a non-conductor? Uh, kind of a medium conductor. Kind of medium, all right. First of all, start up here near the top. Okay. So you have just a little bit of the wire there. Yeah, it's yeah, Okay, now, now go down. You have to sort of scrape it because I think there's some oxidation sort of on the... Yeah, it's getting a little dimmer now. Yeah, d dimmer and dimmer. Yeah. Boy. It's quite dim now. Yeah. If you go way down to the bottom, I don't think you'll get any current yeah, go through at all. Yeah, just a little bit like Just now. a little tiny bit? Yeah. Now, if we had more voltage, we could force some more current through there. Yeah. So, that, so that how well the resistor works depends on, on voltage and several other things. How about this one? Now, this one's tricky, so look out. Here is a coil of wire, copper wire. Yeah. But it's very thin. I'll connect one end. You get ready to connect the other. Okay. See it over there? Now, don't connect it yet. Okay. Because I want you to tell me whether you think it's going to be a conductor or not a conductor. Yeah, it's probably going to be a conductor because okay. it's made of the same stuff right. as wire. Hmm. Just a little bit. Just the tiniest little bit? Yeah, just a little, little a bit. A little tiny bit. In other words, I put so much wire on here and it's so thin, has so much resistance that the current can't get through with this. Oh. Now we're going to make it into a superconductor. Okay. And we're going to do that by putting it into liquid nitrogen. Have you ever played with liquid nitrogen? No. Probably not. Okay, you need safety glasses. Okay. And I'll bring it up. I have it inside a can with all kinds of insulation around it because oh, snow it's very paper. cold, about 300 degrees below zero Celsius. It's bubbling in there. Yes, that's because it's boiling from the heat in the room. Oh. Okay, now what I'd like you to do, take the coil, and here's a nice long tongs that you can grab the coil from the top like this, okay? And now we'll connect it up, get it all set ahead of time. Okay. okay, here's 
Here's the light bulb, but just the slightest little current. In fact, I don't see any at all. No. Now. Let's, okay, now let's dip the coil into the liquid nitrogen. Ooh, it's bubbling. Yes, because you're actually boiling it. It really boils, oh. doesn't it? Look what's happening to the light bulb. It's getting brighter and brighter. It sure is. By the way, don't worry about that stuff that uh, fell on the table and on the floor because it'll evaporate and just join the nitrogen in the room. Oh. But you can see why I wanted you to have safety glasses on. Yeah. See how nice and bright the light is? Yeah. Now, scientists use this idea of making something into a superconductor to do all kinds of very exotic experiments having to do with the very basic properties of matter. Uh. And they use liquid nitrogen and other kinds of liquid uh, gases to get that super cold so they can make things into superconductors.